What's up everyone, John from ARTV. It's time for a review of the sophomore release by the UK rock band Wolf Alice. It's a very highly anticipated album for me personally, possibly my most anticipated release for the year of 2017. This new album is called Visions of a Life. With this being their sophomore effort coming after the stellar jaw-dropping album that just blew me away, their debut, My Love is Cool. You guys know that I'm huge fans of that, and I think I actually got a lot of people on my channel into Wolf Alice all the way back in 2015. So I'm super excited to talk about this new one, obviously. Thank you for being patient and waiting for my review. So, visions of a life. What do we do after the My Love is Cool just phenomenon that it was? It was really kind of a game changer for a lot of, I think, rock bands. In 2015, it pushed a sonic wave back towards rock and bands. And right now, they are one of the most buzzed about bands in the UK, and they're starting to pick up traction in the US as well. My boy Justin Meldell Johnson handled the production on this record. Big fan of JMJ. He's done work with Paramore, M83. A a lot of other bands and acts that I'm definitely a fan of, and I also admire him as a bassist and just a musician in general. I know that whenever he's involved in a project that there's going to be a level head behind the creative mindset just pushing the band in the studio to be the best possible version of themselves. And Wolf Alice are that on this album. This is not a sophomore slump by any means, and while I don't think it's quite as great as My Love is Cool, and we'll get into reasons why, I still think this is an amazing album that sees them doing some exploration and some forays into different territory, whether it be more of like a pop rock, synth pop, hard rock, punk rock vibe, whatever it is, most of the time it works. Whenever the time came to release a lead single, Ellie Rossell and the rest of the band chose Yuck Fu because they wanted something that just right out of the gates just pummeled listeners and just kind of gave you this Riot girl take on how she was feeling at the time. And as the lead vocalist of this band, I can definitely see some great growing in terms of her lyrical content, but I love that they put out Yuck Fu first because it's so not the obvious choice whatsoever, and it threw myself and many others for a loop at the time of its release back in June of this year. So whenever I heard this for the first time, was I a fan? No, I was not at all. In fact, I kind of detested the song right off the bat, and then I played it again, and I played it again, and I was like, okay, this is pretty good, and I think I initially gave the song a 4 out of 5 whenever I finally did a track review for it. I'm glad glad I didn't just review it or react to it based off of my first impressions because now at this point this song is one of my favorites of the year. I don't know how it happened. It just storms in a quick little song that's built off of some menacing guitar tones that will definitely remind you of the first record because of the way that they're built and carved out. But Roselle is really the star of the show here. She just reminds us why she can be so vicious but also so timid in a way on some of the other songs that we'll talk about obviously on this album. But here she is full throttle and I love the lines that she's belting out. She's just giving no fucks and really just tearing down all the walls. It's fantastic and glorious to watch. I would say that Ellie Rossell's variety is a big key factor into why Visions of a Life works so well as a whole, whether it be her lyrical content or her vocal approach because let's be honest, look at Sky Musings compared to Beautifully Unconventional. She's all over the chart but somehow pulls it all off perfectly and obviously we can't go with without crediting the rest of the band as well because they have stepped up in a big way. Some of these songs are very different, like Beautifully Unconventional. It's a song that calls back with those guitar tones and the bass playing and even the drumming that's just kind of steady and thumping all throughout a nice groove. It calls back to the 60s and 70s and I love that song. It's one that she wrote for a friend and it reminded her of the film Heathers whenever she was writing it. I actually saw that movie about a year ago because it was on Netflix and I'm glad that I had the insight to actually, I guess, grasp and understand where she was coming from and seeing the inspiration. And obviously, I think pop culture and her own personal life was a big draw in terms of a lot of the lyrics that we got on Visions. Wolf Alice do not shy away from their harder rock tendencies on this record. I had the opportunity to see them live back in July before the album came out. They previewed and sampled some of the new songs and the material from this upcoming album, and I was honestly kind of taken back by how good it sounded in a live setting, and I was so excited. And the title track was one of those, and if you loved the last album, and some of those more explosive moments like Giant Peach, you're going to be very thrilled to find that there's a lot of material that you can really sink your teeth in, especially whenever 
it comes to harder rocking songs. I mean, yes, there's your more soft and synth pop leaning jams like Don't Delete the Kisses, which is fantastic. Ellie Rossell writing a love song like this and just going all out and kind of giving a spoken word poetry thinking out loud type thing. It is fascinating and fantastic. The chorus slams and I love that backing synthesizer that's really steady and progressing all throughout. But you have a song like that and then you stack that up against the title track Visions of a Life that closes this thing out. Just a final nail in the coffin if you were doubting if the album was going to go out on a good note. This just reassures you that oh my god yes it is. This thunders to life with these roaring guitars that build up and just absolutely menace. They are loud, there's like a wall of noise, and you can see almost a progressive rock tendency flowing throughout this. And that entire song, Visions of a Life, is built around the idea of feeling lonely in a society where we have so many friends online and we have, you know, everybody and everything in our fingertips. We can see it all on our phones, on our computers, our tablets, but somehow we are still feeling disconnected and like life is isn't genuine and we find ourselves wanting and wishing for more. What a great song. I love it. I love how she just opens up about these things. And then Sky Musings is another one that I just did not expect. Roselle sounds so different on this song and she wrote it while she was on a plane. And I think we can all relate to it in a way because we start thinking, especially if you don't spend a lot of time on planes. I know I tend to get nervous. I think that this is more than that, but obviously I feel like I relate to it because I get on a plane and I start thinking, what is the worst possible thing that could happen right now? And Sky Musings just kind of explores that. And she talks about what if we crash? Imagine that. I love the way that she presents this song and the backing bass and guitar just kind of gets ominous the way that it's almost predicting like something bad will happen and it just takes you right into that seat on the plane. Joel's drumming on this record is nothing short of electrifying and I love how he kicks some of these songs up a notch like Saint Purple and Green. That one starts off slow but those drums drive all throughout and I love seeing a song where Ellie is obviously kind of exploring family. She's talking about her Nana on this song and how she's changing, the life around her is changing, but she hopes that she gets to a better place. And while this song does start off slow, I think the drums are a huge part of why that song is such a wrecking ball in a way and a driving force with a big chorus. The title track, Visions of a Life, sees him exploding and really doing some drum fills, kicking it up a notch, and I love seeing him doing that. Even the opening track, Heavenward, which I wanted to give some praise to anyways contains some of the best drumming on this album. While it might not be the most varied or just, you know, wide style drumming approach that I have ever seen, it's something that makes this song connect on a different level. And I like how this song just kind of takes off. It's like a plane getting off the ground and it's the perfect start to this album. My Love Is Cool has a song called Silk that I initially did not love, but the more I listen to that album, and trust me, I have listened to that album more than probably I've listened to anything else in the past couple of years. The more I played the record, the more appreciation I had for such a slow, subtle, burning moment that leaves a lasting impression. Something like that is very rare, and that song actually turned into one of my top favorites. So I have to highlight on this new album another slower one that sees an exploration and a new territory in a way. It's called After the Zero Hour, and this song has the implications of being something dark, something creeping, but also something that's going to stay in your mind. Roselle's personality and the fear that you can almost hear jumping off the page and coming to life is definitely something that feels so tangible and so real. So I love this song to death and I understand to some why it might feel like it doesn't quite fit in with some of the other songs, but honestly coming out of St. Purple and Green, one that kind of talks about the afterlife and what comes next, after the zero hour makes perfect sense before we get into visions of a life where we just reflect on everything. One of these songs took some getting used to for me and I didn't instantly love it. It didn't just instantly go off in my mind like, okay, this is one of the stars of the show right here. But I will say at this point, even though it's not quite a top favorite, Formidable Cool is one that I have to show some love to. This song really strikes with an almost Western leaning vibe and I love the circling guitar pattern on this one and kind of the steady rollicking drums on this thing that give it that different feel. It does stand out. And once again, we get some of the darker vocals and I like that. It's something where they're a little bit more laid back. And then obviously it just transcends and takes 
off as she starts to roar. She tells a story here, and I love the storytelling aspect of this record. We actually get impactful statements about things, and obviously it feels like something fictional here. It was inspired by a book, and I think that this comes across really, really cool, especially once Ellie really starts yelling and those drums and guitars just get furious. The things I don't like about this record are very small, and before I get to my absolute top two favorites that I haven't even talked about yet, I really quickly want to mention two songs that I guess I would consider least favorites, just because I find them a bit more inconsistent, one more so than the other. Now, obviously, I already talked about Saint Purple and Green, and while I do really enjoy and for the most part love that song, I would place it as probably a least favorite if I had to single out weaker moments here, just because it does kind of have an inconsistent and a little bit weaker of a rhyme and reason to it, I suppose. And it's not that it's a bad song by any means, I just feel like some of the moments get repetitive, and after hearing the chorus one or two times, it just, it doesn't leave as much of an impression on you, and something that says, like, come back to me, it doesn't have that draw that some of these other moments do. And the other moment that I have to mention is, sadly, Space and Time. This was premiered a day before the album dropped, it was premiered on Annie Mac BBC, and I didn't find this song to be anything special whatsoever. It talks about being anxious and anxiety, and it just feels like a standard run-of-the-mill, just kind of indie rock song, and Wolf Alice are so much more than that. This one just feels like a band on cruise control, kind of void of personality. I definitely am not a fan of this one. All right, now that we got that little bit of a hard part out of the way, let's talk about my top two favorites. At least at this moment, it could change, and there's some that are definitely rivaling it because I'm still absolutely loving moments like Heavenward and Yuck Fu, but two that really are standing out to me and just gripping me as the listener right now. The first of those being Planet Hunter. This one is just phenomenal. I love this song and how it feels kind of spacey. It goes with the idea and the theme of Planet Hunter. She sings, am I a planet hunter? I love her vocals on this thing. It's kind of fantastic the way that it was mixed and mastered to just kind of give it that effect like you are somewhere else in a different dimension and galaxy. And I love the exploration and depth of the lyrical content it has. It's something that just doesn't shy away from just going for it. And a song like this shows the true talent of the entire band. I definitely see this as being a huge standout here along with the other moment that I'm about to drop on you, Sad Boy. I know I haven't given any mention to it as of yet, but that's because I'm saving one of the best moments for last. There's plenty of moments that definitely rival it on this album, but there's such an explosive and just kind of call and return feel to this track in the sense that it builds up takes off and then just kind of slows back down before smacking you in the face once again. I love this song and how she's seemingly kind of talking to somebody like, why are you so down whenever you have everything, you know? And she refers to him as this sad boy, this sad person. And I think that it kind of takes the person down a notch, not in a demeaning way by any means, but I think that this song kind of has a relentlessness to it. And I love how it takes off, whether it be the guitars, the drums, or just the little bit of a guitar solo that we get on this track, everything comes together and works for the greater good of this album. This song is just an ignition switch. Now I'm over here doubting myself because I just said those are my two favorites, but I'm looking at the track listing here and I'm thinking, what about these two? Or what about this one? Or what about, you know, Beautifully Unconventional? There's so many great songs here. My main point, this album is really, really, really good. I mean, it's not Wolf Alice, My Love is Cool, but it's Wolf Alice being really, really, really good once again. And I'm very, very happy happy with this album. I cannot wait to get my vinyl copy of it. It's coming from the UK, so who knows when it'll get here, but I'm very excited for that. I hope you guys will check out this album. If you've already heard it, please let me know your thoughts on it in the comment section down below, and if you go check it out because of this review, please tell me if you thought I was right or if I'm totally wrong. Let me know in the comment section down below. It's all just my opinion, but guys, personally, I am giving the new and sophomore album from the UK band Wolf Alice a 4.5 out of 5 for Visions of a Life. Don't forget to leave a like on the review today. It definitely helps out, and if you want to help out further, especially during these times where it's like, who knows if I'm going to get demonetized or not. My other channel, Beyond ARTV, is already getting affected by every single video that I upload now. My Patreon's the top link in the description down below. Even if you can only donate a dollar a month, it totally helps. Or now you can tap that annotation over in the corner of the screen and go directly to my Patreon page. Guys, if you want to see my last Wolf Alice review where I gave them a perfect five, it's right over here for My Love is Cool. Another rock review right here. All of my socials in the description and I'll see you very soon right here on ARTV.